Hello, my name is Brandon Corey, and I'm making a short video documenting how I created this animatronic chicken display. So I built the structure of the chicken using pieces of wood, which I then hinged together to allow movement for other parts, such as the arm and the head. The feathers I attached, which I bought from a craft store, and the eyes, beak, and feet were all sculpted using oven bake polymer clay, which I then painted and attached to the internal armature. So all of the parts of this display are pneumatically operated, meaning that they are moving through the use of compressed air. So if you look at the back of the display, you can see different hoses, which allow air to travel into the different parts of the display and allow them to move. If we follow the hoses back, I keep the control center in a separate room because of the noise that it makes. These are all the different components that control the flow of air in the display and allow different parts to move. We have a couple of different prop controllers, which then operate different air solenoid valves. The source of the air is an air compressor, and I'll start it for you. It fills a tank up with air, and as you can see there are several pressure gauges which help regulate the flow of air into the system. I do not run this prop on a lot of air pressure. Typically around 20 psi is sufficient for the moving parts. As you can see here, water gets filtered out of the air to keep it from corroding different components. It also contains an, a dust filter, which help, filters out dust and dirt from the air. So once the tank is full, the air travels through this hose and splits at this manifold and then splits further into separate manifolds into different solenoid valves. I've wired all of the valves to attach them to these different prop controllers. These controllers are typically used in haunted houses to control elements such as lights or fog machines or solenoid valves in this case. Air enters the solenoid valves and then is either outputted one way or outputted a different way to move pneumatic cylinders in the figure. The system is controllable through these buttons and is programmable. It's usually recorded and then is able to play back a two minute routine. So I will now start the show here. Start it. Usually these both of these boxes are controlled simultaneously. This box operates only the chicken, the movements of the chicken. This box operates the movements of the accessories, such as the umbrella, the tambourine, the pinwheel, and the frog. As you can see, the valves are being turned on and off. And you can hear the sound of the air as it escapes. If we go into the other room and look at the animatronic, you can see that it's moving. Here's a look inside at the cylinder which controls the movement of the tambourine. You can see how there's a cylinder which fills with air and allows a piston to shoot out and operate the tambourine. The cylinder is mounted to a back wall in the box and allows objects to move. There's a cylinder also in the back of the display here, attached on the bottom, which goes all the way up to the top of the box and controls the movements of the frog, allowing him to move up and down. There's also an air hose attached down here at the bottom of the display, which blows wind at the windmill and allows it to turn. I built the windmill out of craft paper from the craft store. So you can see the air exits out of the hose and allows it to move. Whoops. 
Here you can see a cylinder on top of the chicken's head which fills with air and this allows the head to move up and down. Of course, here is the moving tambourine once again. You can see the cylinder inside operating the tambourine. So this is, in a nutshell, how my animatronic chicken display works. The audio is played on these speakers, which we see in the back. And it is controlled using a laptop system. I have input my voice into an audio editing program, recorded the show, also included sound effects such as the frog sound effect. And I've also digitally altered my voice to make it lower for the voice of the frog. And I've also recorded myself singing and playing the music on a keyboard, which I layered in tracks on the keyboard to create the song that the display sings. So, thank you for watching. And this was the insides of my animatronic display. Thank you very much. Bye.